Next up, let's take a peek at the media screen for the vehicle. So this is brand new for the 2021 model year, and it's Lincoln Sync 4 media screen, which means that it's a nice upgrade from the previous generation, which was Sync 3. And so one of the big note things, obviously, outside of this beautiful 13.2 inch screen, it's going to be the introduction of wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we don't need to physically be connected through USB anymore. We can literally just connect using, and, uh, using wireless over Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if we wanted to, but we'll get to that one in just a second. So typically the main screen we're going to be met with is this one when we turn the vehicle on. So taking a peek, we're going to literally dive in deep and figure out everything that's going on with this screen. So along the very top, we can see what's going on with our current temperature. So as we adjust for the driver passenger side, we can easily adjust one side or the other. And as you can see there, it is moving around as necessary. We do have our current time, which if we press the time at the top, it's going to jump us into our clock settings. We can jump back up to the main screen. We will get back to that one in just a moment. Along the very top, what's going on with our data connection? So are we connected to wireless? So any sort of a Wi-Fi connection at home, yes or no? Not currently connected to Wi-Fi right now. We can see what's going on with our outside temperature on top of that. We've got our main media as well as what's going on with this subscreen. So we've got a few different options there. So if we take a look at the very bottom, we can literally go between different options by pressing up and down, or we can switch it out to a different style view where we literally just flip up and down. And then once we get to a screen, we can press if we want to, and that gives us a few other options. There are a few of them. So we look at the map specifically, and we can stretch it across in order to kind of fling the map out to the side. And then we can just jump back to this main audio screen. But let's kind of dive through the audio screen. Starting off, we've got our sources. So are we connected through AM, FM, Sirius XM, or Bluetooth audio? So if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an available option if you were plugged in. If you had your phone connected, that would also show up as an available option. So a series of different settings that are available. I'll show you something specific with the Sirius XM side of things in a moment. We can direct tune this way if we wanted to. There's a little tuning rocker a little bit further down if we wanted to go that route, so we can easily tune out this way. So very straightforward. We've got some advanced sound settings, so our different tones. So we can adjust our treble mid-range bass. Normally a good idea to drop the treble down a little bit and then crank the bass up. So this typically would be a pretty good setup for this vehicle, but doing a quick audio test. So that is really, really nice. Like I absolutely love the audio inside of this vehicle. One thing to note, we do have a few different options for the speaker setups and things like that. It's just gonna depend on which version of the vehicle that you're in. So you're at least gonna have 10 speaker system inside of this thing, but we've got the option for a Revel 13 or 19 speaker system. Again, just depending on which trim level of vehicle that you're in. Moving back, we've got our balance and fade so we can easily adjust what's going on with our positioning. If you're the only one in the vehicle, I just recommend keeping it right up in the front there, or we can just press the reset if you want more of like a fully immersive type of audio experience instead. Moving back, we've got our speed compensated volume. So as we go different speeds, et cetera, we can have the volume automatically adjust for us. We've got different options for our quantum sound. So I'm gonna give you a few options. So we've got our audience right now. Okay, so that's good. We go to on stage. So we've got a few different options for the way this thing sounds. It obviously, it's gonna sound way different in person than it will just being picked up from these microphones and things like that. But it is nice to know that you've got some flexibility to choose what you'd like to. And we've also got our Revel experience. So we do that in order to get a quick test of what this system sounds like. Moving back, again, back to this main screen. So we can adjust what station we're listening to that way. We can easily adjust once one way or the other. So this is gonna seek between different available options. And this goes plus or minus one or two. As I said, we do have the option of using the tuning rocker. We can do a direct tune that way, or we can press the voice command prompt in the steering wheel in order to change the station that way if we wanted to. Now sources, if we go into Sirius XM for a second, as you can see, there are a ton of other options that are available now. So we look at the very top and we can get a notification for different either songs or for artists if we wanted to. We can manage all of our presets that are available. We've got individual profiles that are available. So if you've got multiple people in the vehicle, you can literally create a listener to give everybody their own personalized experience. We can jump back into our sound settings there if we needed to. We've got our Sirius XM favorites. We can see our listening history and our different settings that are available. So we can block explicit content. We can have it tuned to a specific station to start, and we can reset all of our listening history on top of that. Preset pages, I always recommend just going for the max available, which is going to be so five pages. It takes a quick second to update. There we go. Because if we jump back out to this main screen, so taking a look at the bottom now, we've got up to 30 individual presets that are available, and they can be a mix of Sirius XM, AM, FM, etc. 
Now, if we wanted to, so we could also browse this way, so it'll take a second to load up all of our different stations that are available. So we've got our For You, different options for music, for sports, for talk. So we've got a ton of different options that are available. We don't have listening history, so it might take a second. There we go. So as you can see, we can break down into different categories. Now, let's say if we were on FM, or well, even if we were back on Sirius, if you wanted to save a preset, so after you've tuned to whatever station, you're literally just going to press and hold, and it saved that preset for us. So it'll take a second. There we go. Updated. And that's how you save presets inside of this vehicle. But that's the basics of how the audio system works inside of this thing. So pretty straightforward. Next up, looking at our phones. We've got a few different options available. As you can see, a previously connected phone. And we can easily add phones Search if we wanted to. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So it's very straightforward. Inside of our phone, we're, oh, we're not going to go to Wi-Fi. We're going to go to Bluetooth. There we go. So we're going to turn our Bluetooth on. And we're just waiting for Lincoln Nautilus in the very bottom. And we're going to connect. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. We want to allow contacts and favorites to sync, yes or no. So you've got that option. We're connected, but watch this. So for your successful. safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right, here we go. So enable 911 assist. Yes, we want to do that. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses that there's a potential collision, it's going to automatically die on 911 for us if our phone is connected. We just hit finish there, and on my phone now, it's asking, do I want to allow CarPlay with the Lincoln Nautilus? Yeah, we absolutely want to do that, and it's literally this, this straightforward. So supports CarPlay, we just want to hit enable, connecting to CarPlay, we should get one more message there. Perfect. Boom. We are now fully connected and oh, we're set to go. Amazing. Done and done. So as you can see, they're fully connected. So yeah, we do have factory navigation. So we could just use factory nav, but we could also use CarPlay to use Google Maps. We can use Apple Maps. We can use Waze directly through this middle screen. One thing that I would like to see if this thing was really full screen to kind of take advantage of what's going on here, but it still is nice that we've got so much flexibility as to different map applications and things like that. So if you didn't want to rely on factory navigation, you've got the flexibility to be able to use your own map if you wanted to. Moving back to the main screen, we've got a series of different options now. So we've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app, so we can see what's going on with different stations. There are certain ones and certain apps that will work through this screen. Other ones may not. So it's going to depend on what you've got set up inside of your phone. Certain apps that I can think of that won't work over CarPlay. Spotify is one of them, so it won't work on CarPlay. But if you were hooked up just through Bluetooth, you'd be able to use that as an option instead. Moving back, as you can see there, we've also got our podcast, so we can listen and see what's going on there. Great one, Knowledge for Men in the Jordan Peterson podcast. Great ones. We can jump back to the back, beginning there. Now, we also have the flexibility to be able to customize the tray. So if we go into our phone, we go to CarPlay, we click on the vehicle, we can customize, and we've got a series of different options that we can customize now. So if you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more, you can drag those to the top, your audiobooks, and things like that. If you're never going to use certain things, you can delete with them as necessary. And then anything that you delete is stored at the very bottom. If you've played around with it too much, you just hit reset in order to bring you back to that factory default screen instead. So pretty straightforward. <laughs> nice reminders. All right, so very straightforward there. And then we can go ahead in order to disconnect if we want to very simply. So we go to our settings. We've got our phone list. And as of right now, we've got a few different phones connected. So if we connect into my phone there, We've got CarPlay that's currently enabled. We can connect a Bluetooth phone and media instead. So if your music isn't working, like the YouTube app is one, and I mentioned Spotify, they won't work natively through CarPlay. But if you were connected through Bluetooth, that audio would work. So we just disable CarPlay, we connect to our media, and it's that straightforward. If we look at our phone settings, series of different options available, we can't adjust anything right now because we're in CarPlay. But if we go back and connect to our Bluetooth instead, so let's disconnect from CarPlay, Take a second to finish that up, perfect. So we're connected there, we hop back into the phone, we go into our phone settings and a ton of options. So because we've got multiple phones connected, if we go back, we've got two phones connected right now, we do have the flexibility of setting a connection priority, so favorite phone. So if, if both phones are in the vehicle, who's going to be connected to the vehicle first? We can manage our contacts, look at text messaging, we've got a roaming warning and battery notifications, or we can scrap it, we can remove it from the vehicle, and we are now disconnected. So it literally is that simple working with an iPhone inside of this vehicle. 
Now, sitting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So if you weren't on this main screen, if you were on any of the other ones, we could just click on phone along the very bottom. And as you can see there, we can connect to a previously connected phone or we just hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And very similar to what we just saw. All right, so we scroll down and we've got Lincoln Nautilus. So we're just gonna connect through. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, and we are connected. Do we want to allow access to contacts, messages, etc.? Please et alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we're fully connected there, and immediately, like we saw on the Apple side, does it, it supports car, uh, Android Auto. So, do we want to enable, disable, etc.? We're going to enable, and as you can see there, connecting in, and it's going to take a second. We're going to go three, two, one, and. Boom, we are fully connected. So it literally is that simple being able to connect through. Looking, we do have, same idea, we've got our nice pinch to zoom there. So as you see there, it's very, very responsive on both the Android and the iPhone side of things. We can change around our navigation if we want to. We can literally kind of zoom ourselves in, in and out, etc. We've got our traffic sources, we've got our route options, about settings, and a number of other things. Along the very bottom, we've also got our podcast that we can listen to there. Moving back to the main menu, this is going to be the main Android Auto menu. We've got our music, we've got our notification center, and then our Google Assistant. <clears throat> and that's something I missed on the Apple side. So if we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so as you can see there, that's going to bring up our main Siri assist, or our main sys, uh, Sync 4 Assistant. But if we press and hold, that's going to bring up our Google Assistant instead. And that's going to be the same way for Siri. So we do a quick press in order to bring up, bring up our, our Sync 4 system. We'd press and hold that button in order to bring up our Assistant. But we could also do things like say, OK, Google, in order to bring up that Assistant instead. So you do have quite a few different options that are available there, just depending on how you prefer to connect yourself. So very, very straightforward as we see. But as you see there, we've got our podcast, we've got phone, maps, and a number of other options. Now, certain apps will not work directly over, over Android Auto, exactly what we saw there. So as you see there, this does occasionally happen as well, but all we do is just launch ourselves back in. And let's go back. And this is, it's not just on the Android Auto side of things. Unfortunately, I've, I've been in a number of different vehicles where Android Auto specifically just likes to cut out randomly. So it is just making sure that your phone is up to date with its most current firmware, software, etc. Just knowing that that can occasionally happen. Not all the time, it does happen sometimes though. And that's the same. I've been in Land, Ro Land Rover Jags. I've been in a few others where that does happen. Actually I, was actually, I was in the Kia Telluride recently and that thing actually wouldn't even connect to Android Auto. So <laughs> every vehicle is different. And I mean, as you saw there. Now, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to be able to customize this thing a little bit. So if we go into our phone, we see there, we search for Android Auto, and we can just pull in to this main screen so we can see what vehicle we're currently connected to. We can customize the launcher if we want to. So we can literally just kind of do a drag and drop in order to move things around. But we do need to restart Android Auto in order for any changes to take into effect. So it's not going to happen automatically, but we do have the flexibility to be able to adjust this very similar to the iPhone side of things. We've got our Google voice detection. We've got Android Auto starting while we're locked. We've got our Google Assistant and a number of other options. So we do have a few different options that are available specifically on the Android Auto side of things. Like I said, if we wanted to adjust certain things, like if we wanted to, let's hop back into Android Auto for a second there, into our settings. Oh, bottom button there. That's what I'm looking for. So this main one. So if you wanted to adjust that, we do have the flexibility to do it by using our customized launcher. But when we do, we just have to shut down our Android Auto and relaunch in, any for, in order for any changes we make here to take into effect in the main screen there. Now, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we can jump into our settings along the very bottom there going into our phone list. We've got our Galaxy. We can disconnect, connect, we can disable. We can scrap it out if we wanted to delete that phone as well. And it really is. So if you three, two, one, as you saw there, that's simple. And that's how you set up a phone inside of the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus. All right, continuing through. So if we go into our navigation along the very bottom, so as you saw earlier, we can connect to Android Auto, Apple CarPlay to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze. But we do have the flexibility of using factory navigation. And as you can see there, super responsive touch, which is a nice change from the old Sync 3 system. We can maximize the screen if we wanted to, which gives us that full view instead. We've got our menu along the very top, which gives us a ton of other options. We've got our map orientation. We can go 2D, 3D, etc. We've got our voice, so as we come up to a turn, do we want to have voice and tones, strictly voice, or strictly tones? 
We've got traffic on our map and we've got our weather. We can avoid certain things on our route. So if you want to avoid toll roads, tunnels, and a number of options, we can easily select as necessary. We can show different things on our map. So do we want to show different point of interest icons like coffee shops, rest stations, and a number of other options. Moving back, we've got more advanced settings. So we've got map, uh, routing and map preferences. We can show carpool lanes. We've got a 3D map. We can have the vehicle dynamically reroute if a faster route's available. Really, really nice option because that's typically something we would just find inside of the Waze app. We've got our preferred route. So do we want the fastest or the most eco-friendly route? breadcrumbs if we have that one on as we go to different locations think Hansel and Greta it'll drop little dots as we go letting us know where we've gone so it is really really nice that's going to be the basics for the advanced we've got some alert preferences so as we go to different options there we've got our privacy options so we can clear recent we can clear all of our data we can factory reset it instead so if you're selling your vehicle we could just factory re reset all of the different navigation settings that we've got set up and we've got some basic about so actually if we go into about We've got our current build. So you do the flexibility through over the air updates in order to have this thing set up. Definitely recommend connecting to a Wi-Fi network at home. And again, we can just go along the very top or we can jump into some advanced settings, which we'll get to in a moment in order to be able to do that. Moving back, that's gonna be the basics for the navigation settings. We can search for an address easily that way if we wanted to. We can look at some recent, saved, gas stations, food, parking, and a number of options. So I was actually doing something earlier on the steering wheel, the, yeah, the steering wheel on the cluster screen. So I was just searching for a gas station, but you could use your voice. So voice command prompt there, if you wanted to search for an address instead, we could just easily search for a destination. So we can just start typing, and it is a predictive text. So if you start typing, you give it a second, and as you can see there, it gives us a few options. We select a space and we can call, we can save it as a favorite, or we can look for parking as we go, or we can just start the route out. The button along the very side, so that split arrow, that's going to give us different route options that are available. So we've got different route choices that we can take. We can select whichever one we'd like to. Pressing back, we've also got our end unit. So we can kind of see a beginning, end, etc. We can collapse the screen in if we wanted to have that split screen instead, or we can just go to extend it back out. Moving back, we do have a series of other options, as you saw earlier, from different searching. And we've got our recents as well as our saved. So we don't have any saved addresses as of yet, but if we go, let's take this one and we're gonna save it. We're gonna go back, back, saved addresses. So we've got this current address that we can click through if we wanted to. So you can easily save addresses if you need to, and then you can unstar it that way on top of that. And then just press a button start in order to be able to actually start the route. Road, turn right to Kingston Road. Perfect. We've got a notification along the side letting us know how close we are to finishing the route. We can add in different stops on top of that. So if you wanted to have a mid-route stop to a gas station, we can do that. We've got different views on top of that. We can mute out if you didn't want any sort of guidance prompts. And we can also cancel the route out very simply that way on top of that. So that's very that's really how we use this. It's really straightforward to do it. We do have the flexibility to search a few different ways. So if you wanted to search using GPS coordinates, we could just type in the coordinates there instead. On the bottom left hand side we can change out our keyboard language so if you prefer a different language you can do that we can change it to different options there on top of that so a lot of flexibility inside of this vehicle using factory navigation next up we do have a button for our favorite along the very bottom in the middle of the tray and that gives us a number of other options so we have a favorite button but we can have this button specifically do a few things so we can have it as a hot spot and press in order to bring up our audio sources watch this updates the tray so if we're on any other option we click on audio sources, launches us back into this page instead. We press again and we can edit it out in order to change out different options. So we wanted to have it as a vehicle hotspot for ambient lighting, phone list, things like that. So you do have quite a little bit of flexibility as to what's actually showing up there. Looking at our app screen, so as you can see there, we've got our Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If we were hooked up over Bluetooth, certain apps will be available on this screen. So one I can think of is LiveX Live and Pandora. So those ones will hook up over Bluetooth and you can control them directly through this screen. Any other app, so if you're using things like Spotify, things like that, you can connect and they'll play fine over Bluetooth. The YouTube app is another example. You can't connect the YouTube app there, but if you're just over Bluetooth, you'd be able to listen to it no problem. Very bottom right side, we've got some additional settings. So starting off, let's go to our radio, which we saw some of these ones earlier. So we've got our radio text and preset pages and things like that. If we were on Sirius XM, we would have that additional Sirius XM settings instead. Phone lists, so we can see what phones are currently connected to the vehicle. We've got some advanced settings for our sync navigation, which we saw those ones earlier. So we can avoid different options. We've got some advanced sound settings, which again, same thing. We saw that when we were going through the audio tab. 
we've got some vehicle settings now. Auto start stop is the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time. We do have the flexibility to turn this thing off, which is great. Our rear occupant alert, so when we go to turn the vehicle off, we've got this alert showing up. So whether or not that one shows up or not is going to be a matter of preference, but you do have the flexibility to turn it off if you don't like it. Vehicle serial number, we've got our door keypad code on the outside. So there is a five digit factory number that's going to be standard, and we've got the flexibility to easily set up additional codes if we wanted to. We've got our rear view camera delay. So as we've got the vehicle in reverse, when we go to drive forward, the rear view camera is just gonna stay on for another moment. And then, ooh, one more thing. We've got our backup start passcode. So you're only gonna see this one if your vehicle is equipped with phone as a key and if you've got phone as a key set up. So all you would do is download the Lincoln Way app on your phone and it's very straightforward to set the app up. And then from there, you have a backup start password because if you don't have your key fob on us, on yourself, you could use the phone as a key if you wanted to, but if your phone's dead and you don't have the key fob on you, you just enter in a passcode, so that five digit number on the outside to get into the vehicle and then you, you enter in the backup start password in order to be able to actually start the vehicle to drive home. So it is nice that you've got the flexibility to be able to do that. We've got our clock settings, which we saw earlier. So we could, if we wanted to, click on the time at the very top to jump into our clock settings, or we can go through the settings clock instead if you wanted to. Change hours, minutes, AM, PM. We've got our military time, so 12, 24 hour mode. Auto time update, so it's automatically gonna update the time based off of our GPS location. Personal profiles are great, so if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, it'll remember literally your cell phone settings for your individual profile, all of your presets, how you have things set up. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, set up an individual profile for each driver. It is a lifesaver, literally, so that you're not fighting over all the, all the time about whose radio presets have been touched and adjusted and things like that. So you've got some flexibility there. General settings, we can change between English, Spanish, French, kilometers cells, uh, kilometers or miles, I should say, Celsius, Fahrenheit, we can disable the beep, we can send feedback, so if we ever run into any issues, we can contact Lincoln that way, or if you're selling the vehicle, you can do a reset. So you can reset Lincoln way, so if for whatever reason the Lincoln Connect app isn't working, you can reset that. If you're, You can also do a master reset if you're selling your vehicle. Moving back, we've also got, there we go, some display settings. So when as big as bright as this thing is, if you find it's too much, we can hit display off to turn the display off, button press to bring it to life, or we can turn it into a calming screen instead with just the date and time. Button press again to bring it to life. We can adjust the brightness on top of that, so we've got a few different options for how this bright or dark this screen is. Pressing back, we've got a few different modes. So in auto mode, it's going to flip us between the daytime or the nighttime mode, just depending on how bright it is outside. But we do have the flexibility, as you saw there, there was a little bit of a switch, so we can change it out automatically, lock it out one way or the other if we wanted to. So if you prefer the look to the nighttime, you can have that permanently locked out if you need to. And we've got some options for personal assistant. So personal assistant, very simple, very similar to what we saw on the Siri side and the Google Assistant side. So if you say like, hey Siri or okay Google, it'll listen up for a different wake word specifically for this sing for media screen. We can set up whatever wake word we want to. So let's say if we have okay Lincoln, and we say that, so, <laughs> so you hear that? So it said, okay, I said, okay, Lincoln, and it ended up popping up because <laughs> there it goes again. I'm not gonna say that wake word, but you can set it up for a few different options. So if you say that word, rather than pressing the command prompt on the steering wheel, you say the word and it's gonna wake up so you can do a few different things. Advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications. So as we go to change different things, this is going to be the command list. So we can turn that command list off if we wanted to. But the advanced mode, so let's say if we were to change a station, we just wouldn't get a notification letting us know it'll change the station, it'll just do it. So once you really get the hang of the vehicle, keep that advanced mode on, it's amazing. Moving down, we've got some command help. So it'd give you an option of what's available for the voice command list. We've got some more advanced options for the seat, so we can press it this way. There's also a button just on the left-hand side, so inside of the one that we would use to adjust our lumbar support, we can also press that button, as you saw there, in order to be able to turn that on instead. So we've got a hot button press to turn the massage on. Really, really nice. Now the massage chair seats are not standard inside of this vehicle. They are going to be optional inside of different trim levels of the vehicle. We have to be at least on the reserve model of the vehicle. So it's optional in Canada, out throughout the reserve, same thing down in the States, and then you'll get it in the black label in the States. So really, really nice that we've got that option. And that's gonna be the same for the driver passenger seat. So we can adjust that. And we can even adjust individual cushions. So yeah, we've got, a, we've got our base seat, but in the 22A power adjustable, we can adjust individual elements of the 
seat on top of that. So you can really get the perfect position for yourself looking at each individual leg. You can kind of get these things to contour in a little bit more than if you were just looking at the base adjust buttons on the left hand side there. Moving back out, ooh, actually, let's go back into the massage for a second. Because massage seats, we've got a series of different options. So we've got our upper, lower rolling, etc., And we've got a few different options for each mode. So we've got three different settings that we can go for to give us a really in-depth massage. And you can see exactly where it's gonna be hitting as we go. So if you take long distance trips, definitely recommend looking at the option with the massage chair seats to get your legs, so your hamstrings and your lower back massaged as you go. That's why I'm getting a butt massage now. It's really, really nice. And then it'll, when you turn it off, it'll just bring it back to whatever your personal settings are. We've got some options for connectivity over and above that. So we've got our Bluetooth connections, wireless app projection, and a few other options there. We've got our vehicle hotspots. The vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem. We do need a data only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to use it, but it's good for up to 10 devices, which is amazing. We can see what's going on with our data usage. We can go through and dive into different settings. So you can set up your different, your network name. You can set up your password and a few other options there. Moving back, you can manage connected devices. So if there were connected devices connected, or you can block devices out as well. So if one of the kids are being bad, you can lock them out there, which is great. Moving back, we've got our mobile apps. So certain apps will only work if we're connected through USB. And as you see there, it's strictly on the Android Auto side of things. We've also got our system updates. So system updates and the connectivity kind of work hand in hand. So I definitely recommend connecting to a Wi-Fi network at home so we can literally connect, so manage Wi-Fi networks. So you connect your vehicle at home, you turn your system updates to automatically go on, and you can schedule them to go at a certain time on top of that. So if you only wanted to do Saturday morning at 3 a.m., you can have that done. So it is very straightforward, and it'll just automatically connect, see if there's an available update, download that update, and install it for you. Sometimes the update, the, the file sizes are fairly large and just doing it over the air, it might take a couple hours to do it. So if you're wondering why it's kind of stuck in a weird loop, it hasn't actually updated, give it a couple hours, come back. That's the reason why. And then we've got our ambient lighting. So ambient lighting all throughout different parts of the vehicle. We can literally select what color we'd like to. And that's literally going to be, so our cup holders, we've got a little bit by our feet. There's a little tray on top of that that we'd see the ambient lighting showing up. So we can literally select whatever color we'd like. I love that ice blue. It looks really sharp inside of this thing. Moving back, we've got a few different, uh, two, oh, a few more options. So we've got our digital owner's manual now. And that's new for any Lincoln or Ford vehicle that's got the Sync 4 media screen. So we won't get a physical printed manual anymore. It's going to just be a digital one. So if you're getting any sort of weird things on your dig on your display and you're trying to figure out, you know, what's that dash warning light supposed to be, you can look through there. You can look at different category views, different options and things like that. So vehicle care and maintenance, if you wanted to see your regular maintain schedule, you've got maintenance schedule, I should say, you've got the option to see exactly what's going on. So it is really nice that we've got that flexibility. We can do a visual search, book marks and some added videos there. We've got our 911 assist, which we've already turned on. You need to be connected through Bluetooth in order for this thing to actually work. But once you've connected, if you're in an accident, the vehicle's gonna dial 911 for you. We've got the valet mode on top of that. So valet mode, you enter into four digit pin and it locks the screen out. So if a valet is parking your vehicle, they can't look at previous addresses and destinations. They can't look through any options. Literally this whole thing is locked out. And this is when you're in valet mode, the screen is the only thing that's gonna be locked out. So something to think about, but it is nice that we've got that flexibility. And that's gonna be the basics of the Sync 4 media screen. Like I know there's quite a lot that was covered off, but at the same time, there is quite a lot of flexibility built into this screen. 